breaks away, does break a couple of tacklers, gets out to the 25. Kevin Williams made the stop. Steve Pelour, the Dallas quarterback. Here's what he'll be looking at. Marcus Cook in place of man. But there was some doubt about him because he sprained his ankle in practice. Grant and Manley. They'll be up front. Kaufman, Olkowitz, and Wilbur Marshall, the three linebackers. Brian Davis and Daryl Green, the cornerbacks. Bowles and Walton, the two safeties. Cowboys first and ten. 26. Quick roll right. Gets rid of it to Newsom. A loss of yardage. Wilbur Marshall put the heat on Pelour from the backside. He lost two. The rest of the Dallas offense. Herschel Walker and Timmy Newsom, the runners. Ray Alexander and Kelvin Martin starting at wide receiver. Michael Irvin didn't dress. Darrell Smith, Nate Newton. Rafferty the center, Crawford Kerr, and Kevin Gogan up front. A huge offensive line. You could say that about both teams. Second and 11. Two tight ends set up this time. Martin is put wide left. Fedor back to throw again. Come on. Had it and dropped it. It's incomplete. Green made the hit that shook it loose. Hey, this is a guy that Tom Landry said is one of the best players on the team right now, Kelvin Martin. And you see what happens here. He runs a good hook there, but he catches the ball too close to his body, and it hit the top of the right shoulder pad and jumped out. But Tom Landry said, of all our players right now, Kelvin Martin is one of the best on this team. And he said that occurred right from the very beginning. Had a great training camp. So he's only 5'9", 161 pounds. Alexander split wide to the left this time. Martin is to the right. Walker's the man in motion. Valor out of the spread. Up into the pocket. To Walker, and he is cut down, just as he made the reception by Wilbur Marshall. Wilbur Marshall made two big plays for the Redskin defense because the first was a blitz on Pelour and the second that open field tackle on Herschel Walker. I know that that's the thing that they worried about the most was Herschel Walker catching the ball and running in the open field. Darrell Green, number 28, might have gotten nicked a little bit. Yes, he did. He got off the field by himself, but... He got off limping. Derek Shepard just activated by the Redskins. Back deep for Mike Saxon's punt. Good snap. Good kick. Inside the 20. Derek Shepard. Hit by Eugene Lockhart. Mark Rippon. Between Joe Gibbs and Charlie Taylor will start at quarterback. The defense he'll be looking at. The familiar front four of Jones, Brooks, Newton, and Jeffcoat. Ron Burton, Eugene Lockhart, and Gary Cobb, the linebackers. And the secondary has Everson Walls and Ron Francis, the cornerbacks, Michael Downs, and Bill Bates, the safeties. A very noisy Dallas crowd. Rippon looking at a tough defense to run against. Down by Danny Noonan first. An assist from Gary Cobb. The Redskin offense. Jimmy Smith, the lone runner, Art Monk, Gary Clark. Craig McEwen starts at the H back spot. And Joe Caravello replaces Donnie Warren and those who replaced him at tight end. Jacoby, McKenzie, Bostic starting at center, Mark May, and Jim Lachey on the right side. Second down, six. Smith got four. Kelvin Bryant is the deep back with Caravello in front of him. Bryant at the line of scrimmage by Lockhart and Cobb. Yeah, there's a big thing in Washington. Should Timmy Smith start or should Kelvin Bryant start? And I think 
probably they would like to start Calvin Bryant and play him more, but he's not that big, durable guy that Joe Gibbs likes his running backs to be where they carry 25 or 30 times a game. Jimmy Smith is only averaging like 2.2 yards a carry, so they know they have to do something. Bryant stays in the game. Part wide left, that's Monk, the move man. Rippin back to throw. Hit from behind. Fumble, I believe. Hit by Jeff Cope. Recovered by Jones. There's the turnover thing that's killing him. Jim Jeffcoat is going to come right around Joe Jacoby here. Run right around him. Rippin turns this way. Boom! Jeffcoat hits him in the back, and the ball knocks out. Watch him. He just goes right around Jacoby. Gets a little bump there. Rippin doesn't see him. He hits him in the back and the arm at the same time, and the ball pops out. Remember, last week against the Giants on the first series, the same thing happened when Lawrence Taylor hit Rippin. Joe Gibbs was saying just one of those things, but every time our quarterback gets hit, he fumbled. Dallas fumbled. Herschel Walker. It was a high toss, but Walker got a lucky bounce. That could have been right back to Washington. See, here's the thing that is really hurting. They've only had four takeaways, and of those four, they scored seven points. But they've given the ball up 13 times, and their opponents have scored 41 points. And that's been one of the biggest things that's haunting Joe Gibbs. Doug Williams alongside the haunted man, <laughs> Doug Cosby. tight end. Ball is batted down by Dave Butts. Yeah, there was talk whether Dave Butts would even be able to play today. He twisted his ankle in practice on Wednesday. Didn't practice Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Thought they'd try it in the pregame warm-up. Watch here. He gets the push up the middle. Gets that big left hand up. And I'll tell you, that is the type of rush you have to have from the middle. Straight up, right into that quarterback's face, and it's tough to throw inside. Bring up third and 13. Dean Hamill replaces Darrell Grant to rush the passer. Delore has time. Has Martin. Alvin Walton and Dennis Woodbury. Stop Martin at the one. Well, yeah, Steve Pullur has really come a long way. A year ago, maybe a week ago, in this situation, he would have run the ball. Look at that hole he has. Now, instead of running, he steps up, he looks, and he finds Kelvin Martin downfield. Watch him. Dennis Woodbury's 46. He's coming in man-to-man -man on Kelvin Martin. He breaks it off, squares it up. Gardner gets it in the end zone. First and goal at the one. The give is to Newsom. Newsom touchdown. Walker was the lead blocker. And effective. I think Tom Landry starting the game that way. Not let him think Herschel Walker's going to get the ball the ever every play using him as a decoy and blocker. Newsom's second touchdown of the year. Pelora is holding for Roger Ruzik. and 57 seconds left to play in quarter number one. The Cowboys take advantage of the turnover. And they lead 7-0. 9.57 left to play in the first quarter. Dallas 7. Washington nothing. That's how they got it. They recovered the fumble. Jeffcoat with a sack. Jones recovered the fumble. Took them four plays to get it in. Jeff Goat ought to get the points on that. I mean, they ought to yep. give seven points to the old defensive end. Great pass rush, and uh, I tell you, those quarterbacks are having a tough time this year, not only staying healthy, but 
It seems to be we see that more and more where the guy gets hit from the blind side and the ball comes out. Derek Shepard just activated this week. And Joe Kim said we got to find out about him. Short kick. I don't know if he'll handle it or not. At the 15, he does. And gets outside the 25. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, the big play was Calvin Martin getting the ball down there and then Timmy Newsom taking it in now here. He started to follow Herschel Walker out there. Herschel gets a little block for him, but then he finds that soft spot inside and boom, just took it right in there. You know, I think it's interesting. I'll bet you Herschel Walker in this game carries the ball at least 25 times and he hasn't carried it his first time yet. Washington ripping back the throw, gets it out to Kelvin Bryant, who is wide open. The Cowboys are coming on a blitz. Bryant gets in Dallas territory, knocked out finally by Michael Dan. Somebody had to make a mistake. I think that's one of the things the, the Redskins do. If you bring a blitz, they're going to send Bryant out anyway. And they call him a hot receiver. Now watch him. See the linebacker, Cobb is blitzing. There's no one to block him. But now Kelvin Bryant is free. There's no one to cover him. Rippon knows that. Rippon sees Cobb coming, and he knows that he has to get the ball to Bryant. Good adjustment by both. Rippon going deep for Ricky Sanders. Just over his head, he was covered by Bates. Indianapolis 3-0 over Buffalo. And the Rams 3-0 over Atlanta. Those are both first quarter. Jets got a safety against Cincinnati. Hey, you win me. Here's Jim Lachey. This is a great matchup. Jim Lachey 79 against two tall Jones. I mean, those are two guys are at the top of their games, two of the best in the game. Lachey won that battle. Remember, that's not a run. That's pass protection. And that's very effective. You didn't do it much better than that. Second says, I don't want to tie up with him. He's too strong. I want to run around him. Second and ten. Ripping back to throw it again. Gets it outside to Gary Clark, who's hit by Ron Francis, but a gain of seven nevertheless. wide to the left with Clark inside him. Sanders to the right. Caravello on the slot. By Kelvin Martin. First down Washington. Kelvin Bryant, sorry. Remember a week ago we were talking to Joe Gibbs and he says that he thinks that Kelvin Bryant is not only the best receiver coming out of the backfield in the game today, says he thinks he's the best ever and uh, so that's what you know it's not that he doesn't start or does start I think Joe Gibbs would rather save him and keep him fresh so that he can put him in those passing situations and not take the pounding that a running back has to right now he stays in the game on first down Monk on the move as usual here's Kelvin Bryant Bryant finally stopped by Bates of 12. Yeah, we got a good block from Joe Caravello. Now watch here. Here's Caravello here. He's a tight end, but he lines up as a fullback, and he becomes the lead for Calvin Bryant. And right on the line of scrimmage, watch here on Cobb, right there, boom, he gets that block there. That gives Bryant the area that he needs to get through the hole. Great block, block by Jacoby as well on Jeffco. First and 10. 14. Elvin Bryant again, hit by Danny Noonan first. No gain on that one. Hey, at that time, you know, the Redskins only use a one-back offense, but more and more, they're getting a second guy in that backfield. Again, they had Caravello in there. He's a tight end who's playing for Donnie Warren. And you get a guy like that, he's a big 270-pound guy playing in the backfield. You know, he was a nose tackle for Atlanta. 
The Redskins are using him at tight end. Then they put the tight end in the backfield. And he was a fullback in high school. That was before he grew to 280, before he started eating sinkers. Ripping. Wide open is Gary Clark. Touchdown, Redskins. No one near. Hey, the Redskins had two guys deep in the end zone. The Cowboys only had one defensive back, Robert Williams. I went here, you see, Clark is going to come to the inside. Sanders goes to the outside. That's Ron Francis. He gets turned around. Hey, Clark turned him back and then to the inside. He turned him around in the opposite direction, even. I know. He wasn't close when that ball was thrown to him. Low Miller for the extra point. Gary Clark just scored his first touchdown this year. And a strike from Rippon. 7-7. Redskins 7. Cowboys seven. Washington scoring drive, and it was an excellent drive. Seven plays, they went 74 yards. Touchdown pass from Rippon to Clark. Ironic that both Bryant and the zone. Bounces at about the 30. You know the interesting thing, Pat, watch this. The Redskins, they keep eight guys in. They keep eight, and they got the quarterback as nine. They only run a two-man pattern. That was what I was talking about. Look, here's Art Monk. They keep him in the block. The tight end in the block. Calvin Bryant blocks. So now they got eight guys blocking the Cowboys, eight coming. Then Gary Clark has chance to do this. But I think this has to be done more and more in this play. If they're going to bring all their guys, keep all your guys in and work individual patterns. You have a guy like Gary Clark working it, and blockers like that, it all looks good. That looks perfect. It's Chandler on the move, and Pelour back to throw it again. They'll try to. Gets it out to Chandler, and Chandler rambles for a Cowboy first down. Pick up 13, stopped by Brian Davis. That was an interesting play. Watch Chandler is going to start off. He's going to block Dexter Manley. He's going to start off here and right up at the top of the screen right there. Look, he's blocking there on Manley. Now he lets Manley go. Now Manley chases Pelour. Then Pelour throws it to Thornton Chandler. That looks like something you draw up in the playground. Or at the senior prom. Or <laughs> you block him and let him go, and then when he comes to get me, I'll throw it to you. Chandler had to lead the game. He got two yards. Well, you've been over Seattle in the first quarter. Minnesota leading Tampa Bay. And the Jets now 9-0 over Cincinnati. The only remaining unbeaten team, the Bengals. Second and eight, Mark Rippon. that he can get a first down. Now watch what, what happens here. You see right there, he sees that, that hole in the middle. Butts can't get to him. Now he knows that he has seven or eight yards before he has to go down, and he has a first, yard, and he has a first down. I think Tom Landry likes it a lot better when he starts, finds a hole, and throws the ball. Yeah, Walker is put out wide right this time, covered by Walton. Marcus Cook. 
one of the things that I can tell that Tom Landry and the Cowboys are trying to do is to not give the ball to Herschel all the time. So what they do that time, they split him out, get Alvin Walton out of there, who's like an extra linebacker, and then give it to Timmy Newsom. They already got one touchdown with that strategy. But eventually, they're going to have to get back and say, Baloney, here it is. We're giving it to Herschel. You stop it. Redskins bring a few. Ballour has to get rid of it. Ray Alexander, the intended receiver, covered by Davis. Sort of a delayed blitz. Otherwise, watch the linebackers. What they do is they're going to wait and stop and let the blockers get out. You see right now, you see they don't come in the blitz now. Now watch right here, coming straight up the middle. You saw Coleman, number 51. He just waited till the, the, the blockers got out, and then whap. And then, of course, the receiver fell down, too. So that's a lot of bad things happening to the Cowboys on one play. Bring up third and 14. Ballure out of the shotgun this time. The Redskins can bring a blitz. Ballure eludes it for a while. Manley catches him from behind. He picked up two. Not nearly enough. Dexter Manley, he's the outside guy here. He's going to come in a stunt. You see, he starts up, then he goes to the inside. He goes down. Newton takes him down, the left guard. He jumps up and catches Pelor from behind. That's a heck of a, a move by a big defensive end. Saxon. The punt for Dallas. Derek Shepard back deep for the Redskins. to the 20. So with 238 left to play in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. Scores the Cowboys 7, the Redskins 7. Number 1, Miami. Number 5, Notre Dame. Two teams with national championship dreams next Saturday on CBS Sports. Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas, located between Dallas and Fort Worth. Pat Summerall, John Madden were in the first quarter. Victor Scott has replaced Michael Downs, who has a groin pull. Back from the locker room and on a sideline. He might be back. Griffin gives to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant out for a gain of about five before he's stopped by Burton and Lockhart. Give him six. Yeah, one thing, uh, uh, of course, Doug Williams had the emergency appendicitis a couple weeks ago, and Mark Rippon became the starting quarterback. And since that time, since Williams hasn't been there, this Redskin team is 0-2. But I'll tell you, it's not because of Mark Rippon. I am really impressed with this guy as a quarterback. He's got a lot of points. And on that first drive, he did everything he had to, and in every game, it seems like he has. Caravello on the move. to a first down, a gain of four, stopped by Gary Cobb. Yeah, I think Kelvin Bryant is trying to show Joe Gibbs and everyone else that he can be that workhorse. Look, I gave you five rushes already. You know, Kelvin Bryant is that long, slender type of guy as you look at him. You know, he covers up most of his arms. You see with elbow pads and wrist stuff and long sleeves because he doesn't have a lot of... He, he doesn't have big guns hanging out of there. So he just covers those guns up and makes them look a little bigger. But there's not a lot in that muscle area to Kelvin Bryant, you know. But he can do a lot of things. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has the speed and the maneuverability. Great pass receiver. And gets it to Kelvin Bryant. Got very soft hands. He just plucks the ball out of the air, but like I said, he covers everything up. You know, he got those arms, the wrist covered up, and you see how he has everything down there? All those pads, but that guy can do all those slashing type things you have to do. And I think the, you know, big question we're going to be, can he do the inside running, the blocking, and, and take that pounding? He's going to get a rest right now, replaced by Timmy Smith. Monk in motion. It's the handoff to Smith. 
Nothing there. Maybe a yard. Cobb again on the stop. With an assist from Mr. Scott. There's a guy. You have to love that. I mean, the guys... There's two guys in this game that amaze me, and Dave Butts is one of them, playing 15 years in this league down there as a, you know, as a defensive tackle, and the other guy, of course, is Ed Jones, playing 14 years. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score Dallas 7, Washington 7. Saturday, the fifth-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, led by explosive quarterback Tony Rice, hosts the defending national champion and number one-ranked Miami Hurricanes. Steve Walsh has led the Canes to 16 straight victories, but faces a Notre Dame team with revenge on its mind. That's next Saturday here on CBS Sports. Right now, we're at Texas Stadium, beginning quarter number two. Redskins have the ball third and two at their own 39. Kelvin Bryant back in the game. I'd watch Kelvin Bryant if I were the Cowboys. He's out of the backfield. Rippin for Clark. Incomplete. Bill Bates on the coverage. Injury report. Michael Downs, as we mentioned before, has a pull groin. He may not be back. And Danny Noonan was hit on the left knee. Uncertain whether he'll return or not. And Chip Lowmiller doing the putting for the Redskins. This is his first one. Tom Barnhart pulled a muscle during the week, aggravated it in the warm up. That's why Lowmiller's doing this. He was doing well in practice. That one's not so well. Well, it didn't turn out that badly. Kelvin Martin let it bounce. And it gets down to about the Cowboy 22. 39 yards. That fight. spiral on it, Pat, the way you tried to. In fact, that thing came out of there. It looked like a helicopter. It was spinning the other way. You know, the football usually goes that way. This was going that way. Boom, 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 boom like somebody shot it on the way out. <laughs> the boomerang. Dallas offense, Pelour has accounted for all of it. Well, the first part of this game has kind of been Kelvin Bryant. He's been about three quarters of the Redskin offense, and Pelour has been most of it. It's kind of been Pelour against Bryant. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Chandler back in the game. Walker is the lone setback. Thank you, pardon. Walker split wide to the left. They kept Newsom. Picked off by Monty Coleman. And he might score. Chased by Rafferty, but Coleman is in. Flag on the play, however. Penalty on the play. still be the Redskins ball. Monty Coleman got that one of the best coverage linebackers in the league. He's covering against Thornton Chandler, number 89. He has a tight end man to man. One of the few linebackers who does that, who lines up on a tight end, then covers him man to man. Usually the strong safety does it. Coleman covers him and comes up with the interception. Of course, the penalty was against Daryl Grant for a legal block. The Redskins get to keep the ball, but on the 36-yard line. A heck of a play by Monty Coleman. Redskins' third interception of the year. And those turnovers have to even up. Randy White has replaced Danny Noonan. On the counter play, it's Bryant on the fake and Rippin with a pass. Come on. Victor Scott. Bates stopped him. Yeah, Mark Rippon is a big guy. He's like 6'4", 235 pounds. 
So if you're going to get him, you need more than just waving an arm on him. You see, that's where being strong helps. You see, Rippin just kind of put his left arm there and was able to turn out of that and come up and find his receiver, Art Monk. And he got away from Randy White. First down, Redskins at the Dallas 15. Rippin, six out of eight. Jones and Eugene Lockhart. Dexter Manley. They, he had a big game last week against the Redskins. He was he was firing up the crowd, and the crowd was firing up him. He said the officials threatened him, and they said, if you put your arms above your shoulders, we're going to call a 15-yard penalty. Because what Dexter was doing, he was firing up the crowd. Then the Giants couldn't hear the snap count. He ended up getting four sacks. Second. Trying to get it to Kelvin Bryant. He gets through it low. This is a tough down. You can tell Joe Gibbs is thinking about that. Usually the Cowboys blitz in this situation if you're third and two to third and eight. If you're longer than third and eight, then they give you coverage. So this is what? Like third and six? Something like that. There's Ernie Stott. Now I will bet you that they come after Rippin on this play. Well, you know, they got burned on the other Redskin touchdown, or the only Redskin touchdown, when they blitzed. Kelvin Bryant, touchdown Washington. And he was really pounded in the end zone. Robert Williams really put a lick on Kelvin Bryant. Dave, Calvin Bryan held on to it for the touchdown, but but Mark Rippon being able to find him in that middle and get that ball in there so that Calvin Bryant could take that shot was quite a throw. That was Bates, who also hit Calvin Bryant as well. Bates is one of those safeties who brings the biggest load in this league when he comes to hit you. Low Miller for the extra point with McEwen holding. Skins with 13 minutes left to play in the first half. Take the lead 14 to 7. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. AC Delco, automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. And by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. Redskins 14, the Cowboys 7 with 13 minutes left to play in the second quarter. Scoring drive, four plays. Pass from Rippon to Bryant. Rippon is thrown for two touchdowns. One to Clark, and that one to Kelvin Bryant. Bo Miller to kick it off. Kelvin Martin. Woodbury, but a good effort by Martin. Let's watch the touchdown again. Here's Calvin Bryant. He's going to run right up here into the end zone. But I tell you, he really takes a hit by Bill Bates. Watch, watch Bryant coming out of the backfield straight up the middle. Makes a good move there. And I tell you, that's what they talk about concentration. You know, watch Brian here. You have to look that ball into your hands and knowing that a train wreck is coming. Boom! Hey, that is when it's tough to concentrate. When there's no guys around, anyone can concentrate on that pass. When there's guys shooting bullets like that, that's tough. Here's Pelor. Walker. Out of bounds at the Redskin. 37. Knocked out by Neil Okowitz. Gain of 25 for the Cowboys. You can get Herschel Walker on Okowitz. You're going to win that one. Let's watch the protection on Dexter Manley. That's Daryl Smith. He was a replacement player. He knows how to block him. That's an illegal block. 
He just got his arm up there around Manley's throat. But I tell you, when you take an inside move and your feet don't come in with you, that's the only way a tackle can do it is go to a chokehold. First and 10, Dallas. At the Redskins, 36. To Walker. Inside the 35. Yeah, that's, most guys are happy to get that in, uh, in a couple of games. Look at Herschel Walker, and they were in the second quarter. He's carried the ball three times for only one yard. This guy's cut over 100? Ooh. Herschel trade him days right now if they can trade days. Second and eight. Is 26 years old, played in Canada. We say it look, looks like he hurt his shoulder there. But uh, at 26 years old, he's the oldest of the Cowboy wide receivers. I guess it wasn't too bad. He, he thought move. He thought he had some bad stuff hanging there, and he just did a did a U-turn. I thought he was headed for the locker room. Someone must have given him some quick cure as he went by there. One of those deals where a guy just uh, gave him a wave or something, he got cured. Too much time. Galore appeared to be trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. To him, he started to walk away, and uh, Daryl Grant <laughs> took off and darn near caught Pelour. That would be a heck of a way to get injured, get injured on a too much time play. There's Danny White on the left giving the signals, Kevin Sweeney on the right. And you can see they give two sets of signals, so if anyone gets the signals, they don't know which guy is live. First and 15. was saying last week after they played against the Giants that, that they caught a lot of passes on him, but he said they were all short passes. He said, what you have to do in a short pass, you can't knock it down or intercept it, but if the guy catches it, you have to make him pay for it. And that's what he did to Alexander. Alexander didn't catch it, but Brian Davis made him pay for it. So it brings up second and 15 from the 27. Walker. Intended for Chandler, covered by Wilbur Marshall. The ball was thrown behind him. You know, the interesting thing about that, Pat, watch where Chandler comes from. He comes in motion here, then he sneaks right by the center to go out for a pass. Wilbur Marshall picks him up there, but that's how they try and sneak a tight end. Look. He's right in the middle. The ball snapped. He goes right by the nose tackle, and he comes out the other end. Wilbur Marshall sees it. That's sneaking your tight end through, through a large traffic area. Big guy to be sneaking. 6'5", <laughs> 240. 6 out of 12 is Ballour. Has some time. Complete. No flag intended for Alexander. on the coverage, and here comes Roger Ruzik. Yeah, Roger Ruzik, he, he held out, remember, this right. training camp, and he had his problems Monday night. He had a, a chance to tie the game, and he missed it. He got another chance later and made it, but uh, he'll try this one from 45 yards out. It's a tough year for field goal kickers. Boy, is it. And quarterbacks. Away. There's his coach, 
Uncle Ben Agajanian, along with the Dallas punter, Mike Saxon. 14-10. Washington 14, Dallas 10 now in the second quarter with 10 minutes and 21 seconds left to play. We just activated Derek Shepard standing in the end zone. He's not sure what to do with that towel. But here's the guy who's, who's going to come down and maybe take that towel away and knock some stuff off him. They, this guy, you know, you know, when you talk about just football players, yeah, you, know, you don't talk about how big and strong and fast and all that stuff. Bill Bates, I think, is one of the best football players in this league. Just, you know, I mean, running down, covering kicks, doing all the things you have to do to play. And I think love of the game goes with that, too. Find out about Shepard, find out what kind of returner he is. He's a guy who's looked good in practice and he wants to give him an opportunity, and today's his first. Just to summarize what summarize what's happened so far, Delvin Bryant, 68% of the Redskin offense. Herschel Walker's gained only a yard. And the Washington punter, Barnhart, was hurt in practice earlier this week, aggravated the injury in pregame warm-up, so low middle doing the punting and the place kicking. Outside of Monk. Stays on his feet. Taken down finally by Everson Walls and Ron Francis. Seven-yard game. You know, one thing you have to say that, that both of these offenses are clicking today or maybe the, the defenses aren't uh, up, to, up to par. There's Michael Downs. The, the starting free safety for the Cowboys, who'd been having a great year. In fact, he was talking that he, he thinks he's having a Pro Bowl year, and that's his goal. He pulled a groin muscle, so Victor Scott, who was just activated today, is playing in his place. Second and two, Danny Noonan back in the game. On the Dallas defense. Bryant got the first down. Eugene Lockhart, but Bryant got five. Yeah, we were talking about Calvin Bryant carrying the ball more. Look at how many times he's been hit, and this is the thing with carrying 16 times when he's run the ball, three times blocking, eight times as a receiver. So that's 27 hits he's had already. If he keeps going at that pace, he's going to be well over 100 for this game. And you wonder how many of those he could take week after week. Redskins already thin at the tight end spot. I just had the uh, starter, Joe Carabello, limp off the field. Brand. This time, nothing doing. Lockhart and Bill Bates, no game. You know, Bates, you wonder where the blood comes from, but look on his leg there. He already got some going. Eventually, he's going to have some up on his elbows and his hands. And I don't know if that blood comes from inside going out or outside going in. You know, if it's outside going in, that's good. That's another guy. If it's inside coming out, then that's bad. If it's on him, it's tough blood. <laughs> Skin tight end. Griffin to Bryant. Another first down. Victor Scott. There's Joe Caravello. You can see he's having that right ankle retaped. You know that it was taped. Every ankle, every player in the NFL has his ankles taped. So they go into the game and it's taped, and then if they get it injured, then what they have to do is retape it or add to the tape job to give them some more support. It also keeps the swelling down. First and 10, Washington. 45. Take to Timmy Smith. The Ricky Sanders incomplete. Ron Francis with good coverage. for two on Ron Francis and Ron Francis makes up for it. Look, he's, he's running off there. Now right there, Sanders has the step. So Francis has 
to make it up. He makes it up right at the end and almost intercepts him. You know, Monday night, the Saints picked on Ron Francis, and it's just a matter of time because this guy is a good player. The Cowboys, in their defensive setup, a mistake on the game clock. Cowboys asked their cornerbacks to do a lot. There's Laverne Torgerson in a game against the Giants last week. He's an assistant defensive coach. Torgy got hit on the sideline and broke his ankle. So he's sitting. You got a coach hurt. And he coached all week in a golf cart. Ripman under pressure gets the ball down the middle. A flag on the play. It was Art Monk who caught it. This will be the first penalty of the game, if it is one, or the second, I beg your pardon. Gordon McCarter is the referee. Hey, that one's not going to count, but that was a heck of a pass by Mark Griffin, and that's where you that's where you get for being a 235-pound guy. Offense, number 84. Penalty accepted. Repeat second down. All against Gary Clark. But Rippon had guys hanging on him, and he was able not only to get the ball off, but to complete it to Art Monk. And that'll go one. It won't show in any statistic, but that's why you like those big, strong quarterbacks. That's why Terry Bradshaw was always so tough. That, that you could get there, be hanging on him, and he could still complete the ball. Elvin Bryant again in the backfield. You better keep your eye on him. By Tuttle Jones. but he gets his, his foot planted. Too tall, just hits him and goes right around him. Remember, yesterday he said, Lachey is too strong. I'm not going to tie up with him. I'm going to try and get him moves and run around him. Second time Rippon has been sacked. Third and 24. Rippon back to throw. Chased by Randy White, who almost got there. Pass complete to Clark, but a penalty marker down. Scott made the stop. Gain of 18, but there is the dreaded yellow handkerchief if you're a Redskin. You had to be holding whoever was blocking Randy White. Holding. Holding. Number 63, offense. Penalty new time. Fourth down. That's Raleigh McKenzie, of course, who's starting at left guard and and what the Cowboys did they came on a line stunt so you, you, you get part of holding and pat, part of passing off watch it here you'll see up on top you see too tall coming into the inside and you see Raleigh McKenzie and he, he just tried to pants him there <laughs> Randy White went to the outside McKenzie grabbed a hold tried to pull the pants down on the guy I think they might have changed their mind about whether they wanted to refuse that penalty or not. Randy White's the defensive captain. That's the thing, whether they take the 10-yard penalty and let him have third down again or decline the penalty and let him punt. And, of course, when your punter got hurt in the pregame, this isn't a bad move by the Cowboys. In fact, the Cowboys could come on a block here. That's what I would do. You get a guy who hasn't punted, the other guy's hurt, bring a bunch of guys. Elvin Martin back deep for the Cowboys, and it looks like they're bringing a bunch. Martin gets to about the 28. Kurt Kovea down to make the stop. 26-yard punt. A return of three. Five and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Redskins lead by four. This is on the punt return. I think some of your biggest hits and most violent collisions in this game come on special teams. 
because you get 11 guys running 40 yards before they're going to have that collision. There's Below to Walker. This is his best game of the day. Walker for about nine. And out of the shoe, Wilbur Marshall and Darrell Green. So I, I like that. He just he just throws it back on, steps into it, and runs back to the huddle. I mean, that's a real pro when you can put your shoe on and just run it right on as you're going across here. Wait until the huddle so you can hear the play as you stick your finger in there to get it back on. I like that. Second and about a half yard. 14-10. so much then they say okay here it is guys let's get serious here high formation Herschel look what he sees boom a little hole there wrap it through when you get at the end just put your shoulders down and finish it off the only thing is that Al Alvin Walton number 40 is a pretty tough guy too so when you get shoulder to shoulder there Walton won that one excellent block by Newsom those guys are two of a kind, you know, Alvin Walton and Bill Bates. Lure. Incomplete for Kelvin Martin. Darrell Green right with it. Lure under heavy pressure again. You know, you hate to get news like this, negative things, but the Bears lead Detroit 7-0. Jim McMahon has been knocked out of the game with a concussion and a bruised knee. Detroit's Chuck Long out with a bruised knee and Cody Carlson of Houston the quarterback also out so three more quarterbacks down today hey, that is that is a tough thing and what the Redskins did on their touchdown when they kept nine guys in and just sent two out for a pass I think maybe a start in the right direction pass picked off by Walton he's got to beat Pelour and Pelour gets him out of bounds Watch him. He's watching the tight end all the way. He just throws it. The tight end, Chandler, didn't even look back. Walton was looking at him all the way. I don't know if Pelour shouldn't have thrown it then or if Thornton Chandler should have been looking. You're right. He never did even look back. But in any case, that's the second interception for the Redskins. And Rippon going right to work. Has plenty of time. Pass incomplete. He just threw it away. Good pass protection that time. Mark Rivers pass. Well, he had good pass protection. The Cowboys had good coverage, and Rippon didn't have anyone to throw to, so he smartly on first down just threw the ball away. Danny Noonan again, who played on first down, limps out of the game, replaced by Randy White. Is giving the ball to Brian a little more, playing him a little more. We know that he's a receiver, and and over his career he's been a good running back. But I think when you go in as a receiver, being able to run this play, the draw play, is a good thing to go in that package. Pass receiver, screen receiver, and run a draw. First down and goal from the nine. Redskins already lead it 14-10. Rippon doesn't like what he sees, and he's called a timeout. timeout. With two minutes and 58 seconds left in the first half, Redskins have two timeouts remaining. The impelling power of Herschel, the driving force of McMahon, the Cowboys battle the Bears next Sunday on CBS Sports. 
Right now we're at Texas Stadium in Irving where Washington has the ball first and goal at the Dallas nine. Redskins lead it 14 10. runner. He gets in that eye formation. He still wants to do the third thing with the ball. He spun it, and then he spiked it, and then he went and got it again. But watch him here. He's eye formation. Look at the ball. Look, he starts up in that tackle hole, sees a soft spot or a hole back in, and cuts whack right over the middle. That's a slashing run by a slashing runner for a touchdown. Jacoby again. Let's watch it here. See now Brian is going to start in here behind Jacoby. He gets that. Then he sees an area right in here, right in this square, and he takes it and pops it back in there. Watch him. The blocking starts to the left. Good block out there. Now right when he gets by that, you see that lane he sees? That's peripheral vision, being able to run one way and look out his right eye and see that there's not many guys in that area. Tell you what, that Jacoby is a mountain. And he got an excellent block on that touchdown. See who Brian just put his hand on? He put it on Jacoby's head. But thanks, Jake. We were watching the tapes yesterday, and Jacoby hit Lawrence Taylor on a pass protection once in that game as hard as I've ever seen Lawrence Taylor hit. He stopped in his in his in his tracks, his head snapped back, and he couldn't even get restarted again. Kobe six seven and three twenty. Elvin Martin. on all this stuff, but it's amazing how the Redskins concentrated all week. Watch Hamill. He's going in there, just grabs it with his left hand, knocks it out. Terry Orr jumps on it. But this is like the second fumble they've got. They've had two interceptions, four turnovers, or four takeaways they have in the first half. Redskins first and ten at the Dallas 23. 20 by Victor Scott and Bill Bates. Picked up three. Bates, Scott, and Brooks. Look at that. They've had, they've had in the first five games, they had four, and today they've had four. Yes, they've had three today, huh? I thought they had two interceptions and two fumble recoveries. Second and six. The ball is at the Dallas 19. 21-10, and a two-minute warning will come before they can run another play. So two minutes remaining in the first half, and the Redskins in control right now. Redskins 21, Dallas 10. Two minutes remaining, first half. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Kelvin Bryant has had a dominating first half. Total yards 132, the rest of the team 57. He is 70% of their offense here in the first half. Second down and six from the 19. Jacoby 
Humphrey's 66, he takes his man outside. McKenzie, 63, takes his man inside. And with his man going inside, his man going outside, look at the gap there for Mark Rippon to run in. The thing that he surprises me here is he takes the tackler on with his shoulder. At least it's his left shoulder. Solo Miller. And does 28 to 10. With 153 left to play in the first half. And boy, were you ever prophetic when we were talking at the beginning of the game about those turnovers and what a, an important part of the Redskins' struggle had been. And then now they're getting the turnovers, and then the offense is, is coming in and taking advantage of them. Like I said, you know, you always think of offensive linemen making holes for, for runs, but on that time, we saw Jacoby and McKenzie make a passing lane. Let's watch it here again. Watch. You see, by knocking the guy out and knocking the guy in, look at that lane there that can either be a passing lane or a running lane. Now, Rippon decides that he's going to run and take it, but linemen can create all kinds of lanes. And when you do that, I'll tell you, that makes the quarterback's job a lot easier. Rippon's still smiling over it. Jacoby's still sweating over it. <laughs> Miller's kickoff. There's to Martin. Reminder that coming up at the half, Brent Irv and Dick Butkus with scores and highlights. And Dick visited with the legendary George Allen, who coached the Rams and the Redskins. And who's staying in shape in case he gets a call to coach again. He worked the Dallas games in preseason as their analyst. That doesn't seem right, does it? Well, you didn't think, I mean, he was, he was the enemy in the old Cowboys and Indians. George was the Indian. He came in to be a Cowboy, but I think, I think, I think George Allen was one of the guys who really got this thing started, and it's tapered off the rivalry thing, but when George was there, it was in its heyday. Wants a Cowboy scalp to take back to Washington. Can you believe Dexter, though, he he also, he was here one night, they were playing the Cowboys, he called his wife up, and she was going to have a child. So anyway, he decided to name his girl Dallas. So he has a daughter named Dallas, two years old. Ever gay. He also said, Dexter did, that if he had been in Green Bay, he didn't know if he would have named his daughter Green Bay. It would have been a heck of a thing to have a, a daughter named Green Bay Packer. I'll tell you one thing, Daryl Smith is blocking Manly, but he's doing it with his arm. Pass is complete for Ray Alexander. But just barely. He took it away from Alvin Walton. Time out. be that type of game that the defenses really aren't holding turnovers are playing an important part and when you get in that type of game then you have to look and say okay this is going to be a shootout it's not a ball control it's not a conservative game we're going to have to get back and just move the ball and match him point for point it's a tough catch Say it. he just took it away from brian davis Alexander's a big guy. You know, he's a big target. And, and he was able to just bring his shoulder in, get that left shoulder in there, and push Davis a little to the outside. It was kind of like that basketball move where you, you do that body thing to get him out and then catch the ball. Dallas turnovers today. Two interceptions and a fumble. Redskins keep advantage of it. Touchdown each time. Come on, Come on. One thing to get us is another thing to take advantage of. Gore. Pin it for Walker, who broke it to the outside, and Pelor just missed him. Or else he cut off too soon. I would think either that or, or Pelor saw that, that he was covered and didn't want to force it in there because it was first down and decided that he could just throw it over his head and stop the clock and still have three down. Pelor, eight out of 
of 19. Minute and five seconds remain. Cowboys at the Redskin 40. to get in field goal range. They're not in it yet. They need another completion. Redskins just rushed four. Right through the hands of Kelvin Martin. That could have been caught. Seems like every time they throw a, 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 a pass, it's always Brian Davis is in the air. Did you notice that? Elvin Martin goes up. Davis was playing a man for man. As he went up in the air to catch it, whack, he just took his legs out from under him. So Mike Saxon comes on. Derek Shepard. Deep standing at the 10 yard line. 53 seconds remain. Somebody jumped. And the Redskins are saying we were pulled offside. If it's against Washington, that might get the kicker in range. And it is against the Redskins because the Cowboys are walking off the field. That's what they're trying to do. Watch them, they get set. Now they just make a shift. They bring their up backs to the inside. Five yard penalty still for the. Now, it's still fourth down, but what it does, it puts the ball now as a 52-yard field goal instead of a 47. I was watching him when I was down on the field in the warm-up, and he was hitting from this range in this direction. And Agajanian has his watch. What he is, is timing there is the snap and the hole and the kick, not how long the ball stays in the air. Cowboys had they knew they needed the five yards when they didn't get the complete pass so they had that double shift that was really just to draw the Redskins off it worked it got them a shot at the field goal and of course they missed the field goal hey Tom Lander has been in this league so long I think he's seen everything and he usually thinks of everything Joe Gibbs was saying yesterday he said that that I thought that I would be in this league long enough that some guys would start going, but every time we play the Cowboys, that guy in the hat's still there, and so is Too Tall Joe. Here comes Kelvin Brown. Hit down after a gain of one by Ed Jones from behind. That's what's happened to that play, that counter play. It's getting caught from the backside all the time flag on the play. I think with a 28 to 10 lead, if I'm the Redskins, I would be satisfied with that and then not try and press my luck here. The right conduct, levied against the Washington bench, 15 yards from the spot, it will be second down. I wouldn't guess who it is, but I see Dexter Manley up there arguing and Wilbur Marshall up there. Those guys are two of the, oh, and I see Doug Williams there. But Dexter and Wilbur Marshall are two of the biggest talkers on this team. That's one of the ways they compete. I think that might have been called. He looks, Doug Williams really looks upset. Doug Williams is saying, look, I was coaching. I'm not a player. I think I can coach when I wear street clothes. It's 
second and 24, 31 seconds remain in the first half. Draw play to Bryant, bounces off one tackle and slips down outside the 20. Cowboys call a first uh, call a timeout. A flag on the play as well. Maybe they won't take a timeout. Well, there was a flag right at the end. Just as Bryant went down, the flag came right at Bryant. Now I know the Redskins will just want to get this half over because the wheels are starting to fall off on them. Well, they ought to be able to do it with only 25 seconds remaining. Yeah, but they, they're, they're going backwards fast. Here we go, Brock. Number 81 offense. Penalty declined. Third down. That was against Art Monk, and of course that follows the 15-yard penalty on the bench or the sideline. You know, that's one thing about these redskin wide receivers, though. As you see Monk come in there, that looked like a pretty good block to me. I'd give him a, a badge or one of those things you wear in your helmet for good things. But one thing about these Redskin wide receivers, they can be the best blocking core of receivers in this league. Third and 22. Redskins run as much time off as they can. Here's Bryant. Out to the 30. 20 seconds remain. And, uh, and now... The Cowboys do take a timeout. Next Sunday, doubleheader week here on CBS begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. Cowboys go to Chicago, Detroit against New York, Philadelphia at Cleveland, Phoenix. They're surprisingly tough against Washington at RFK. 49ers and the Rams, where John Madden and I will be, New Orleans, Seattle, and Atlanta against Denver. Those are the doubleheader games, the late games. Hey, one thing, the 49ers are going to have to be concentrating on stopping that run. When you have a guy gain over 100 yards in the first quarter, you're some kind of running team. And I'll tell you, you got some kind of offensive line, and those Rams do that. I would think the Cowboys should come in a block here. Miller gets off a line drive. Again, Kevin Williams was down to stop Kelvin Martin. 13 seconds remain. Landry and Pelour. 28-10. Washington leads. I think you can think in terms here, and I'm sure that's what Tom Landry and Steve Pelour were talking about. You don't have to go for the one shot because with 13 seconds and a timeout left, you can go for one long completion, use your timeout, and kick the field goal. Valor from the spread formation. Gonna have time. Put it away. Six seconds left. Valor's class is in it for Ray. Danny White gave him the signal to pass. <laughs> you see that? You're down. There's six seconds. You're down 28 to 10. And he gives him the signal. You know, they have all those complicated signals and stuff. When it gets like that, hey, man, just pass. Throw one. Second and 10. Greg Bell, by the way, the Rams running back. In the first half, 18 carries for 135 yards now. With no time on the clock, however. Time ran out. Ray Alexander made the reception. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Redskins 28, the Cowboys 10. CBS Sports coverage of them. And two, they have to eliminate those turnovers. That's the difference in this game. I mean, they, they have three turnovers. The Redskins got 21 points. And they lead by 28 to 10. Derek Shepard started from the four. Gets out to the 40. Flag on the play. Derek Shepard on the return. They drive down near the 20 yards. So and Tom Landry, you know, he's going in and saying, look, we have to eliminate those turnovers, and we got to get the ball to Herschel. 
Joe Gibbs is saying that's good. We got those turnovers. That's what I've been telling you guys. Now let's go do it again the second half. That was interesting yesterday. Here's Gordon McCarter first. Illegal block, number 54, receiving team during the return. 10 yard penalty, first and 10. He was paying tribute, Joe Gibbs was, to Tom Landry. But he never called him by name. He just called him the man in the hat. And I think that if you've ever coached in this league and you know how tough it is and what you have to go through, and then, and I know I did it for 10 years, Joe's done it for seven years, the head coach. You get to the point, you look at a guy and the guy's doing it 28, 29 years, you say, how's this guy do it? I have no idea. Elvin Bryant. Jeff Coach. Mark Griffin is doing that work from the line of scrimmage 20 yards up the field. That's Monk on the move. Pass complete. Gary Clark in front of Ron Francis. Michael Downs, by the way, will not return. He has a strained groin muscle. Now you talk about a tough guy here. Uh, Gary Clark played last week, and he's playing today with a separated shoulder. And, uh, you know, they said he had a bruised shoulder or anything. His shoulder was separated. And he played last week, made a big catch against the Giants. And then he's out there playing every day. This is the type of guy, you just wind up that engine, and he goes all day. Yeah, he is tough. Hey, when you can do that, you play out there with a dislocated shoulder, separated shoulder. You can Ryan, looks left. Not away from one tackler, gets away from another tackler. Eugene Lockhart for the hit out of bounds. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. That is a frustration penalty. Number 56 on defense, 15 yards from here, first off. I think part of the frustration is being down 28 to 10. The other part of this frustration is not being able to get the guy. He starts to the inside, bounces to the outside, straight arms a guy, runs through a guy. And you finally get him, you hear the whistle, but you don't want to stop. You want to get one more shot. Gene Lockhart was kicked out of the game on Monday night for fighting. And here he gets a 15-yard penalty. Look at Doug Williams. He's into this game. You see him? He was there pointing at Lockhart. Brand is now over 100 yards, 17 carries for 103. Kenny Smith is replaced. Smith gets the carry this time. He's got some and Francis, but he got good yardage. For a sure day. Yeah, he's looking at that thing and saying, you know, when another runner comes in and runs more than you and has a bigger day than you, running backs tend to take that personally. And, uh, you know, it's like linebackers. If a guy, a linebacker, comes in, the guy at home wants to do the better job. Here, Kelvin Bryant's the guy having a big day. Second down and four. Eric man. Here's Smith. Six yards, Redskin first down. Danny Noonan made the stop. They were saying, all the Redskins were saying yesterday, we've sort of got as good as we were. We got to start running the ball again. And that's what Redskin football is, and that's what Joe Gibbs is talking about, is being able to, to run the ball. And he said it's tough. He said when you have our wide receivers like Art Monk, Ricky Sanders, Gary Clark, he said you have to peel it off for them, too. But he said that's just tough for me to do. Smith. Yeah, they are really working that side behind Jacoby. Carabello's blocking. Victor Scott and Eugene Lockhart on the stop. I think they get that. I think you get Lockhart Jacoby and Raleigh McKenzie there at the left guard now. And you get two of their best run blockers. And then they're going over there against Jeffcoat. And I think that's that's where they think they can find the softest spot against Jeffcoat and Gary Cobb. So that's the area they're running to. And of course, they, they are having success. And one of the things, as you mentioned, Michael Downs being out, He's the leading tackler on this Cowboy defense. Second and five. Smith. 
for three. Stopped by Danny Noonan. Just under 11 minutes left to play. The rushing yards 147 to 30. We're in the third quarter with the Redskins leading the Cowboys 28 to 10. I think as you say, I think that statistic there, Pat, is a definition of Redskin football. Right. You say what it is, just show that stat. We run for a lot of yards, keep the ball a long time, and you don't. Smith again. He's going to be close. Eugene Lockhart led the defense. They are short. According to Rippon. Watch Lockhart here. He's number 56. He's going to read the run all the all the way. Go parallel when it goes parallel. Turn up when it turns up. Steve Dias is number 55. He's the first guy there. See, he's there. He's coming in. He has the cutback. So he's going to keep everything inside of him, not give the guy the cutback. So you have Lockhart on one side, Diasi on the other, and you squeeze the run. Here is Low Miller, Chip Low Miller. What a terrible name for a kicker because there are no chips. From 35 yards. That kick was good. It was too much time. I think it's a penalty against the Redskins. They didn't get it off before the uh, clock expired. So he'll try it now from 40. <laughs> Joe Gibbs has really been frustrated with this kicking game, and Chip Low Miller has been frustrated, and then you finally get one, and you didn't get it off in time. <laughs> McEwen holding now. This will be from 40. with the Redskins getting new points but running a lot of time off the clock 28 10 they lead this was this morning about 15 minutes before anyone else came out Redskins as we've been saying had some problems with the kicking game they had the center Dave Harbor out the holder McEwen and the kicker Chip Loman I don't think so Fifth Avenue in Cincinnati. <laughs> they don't say where it is. That's so famous, they don't even have to say where it is. There's Rippin. Clark hit by Francis. Washington's pass distribution. Wide receivers. Running backs and none to the tight end. That's not surprising. Well, that isn't because Joe Caravelli, I mean, they got an ex nose tackle playing tight end. And in their scheme of things, the, the tight end is really a blocker anyway. He's like having a third guard more than a receiver. Griffin gets to Timmy Smith. Cowboys are saying they did. The officials didn't agree with them. Still the Redskins ball. There's our good colleague, Mr. Vern Lundquist, who did the Texas Oklahoma game yesterday. Lives here in Dallas. Most popular. Are down 28 10 as long as he's on the sideline. You ought to give him some play. Kelvin Bryant is back in the game. Rippin gets it over the head of Ricky Sanders. And Low Miller will have to come in and punt. Ron Francis was the man on the coverage. Ron Francis defending on the play. Six minutes and five seconds left to play. Third quarter. Redskins 28, Cowboys 10. Number eight, Chip Lowe, and 
Kevin Martin back deep for the Cowboys. This is a better kick. In fact, this is a good one. Fair catch at the 26. Kevin Marshall with 557 left to play in the third. It remains Washington 28, Dallas 10. Suddenly, there's a... with an interception would have been his second of the day right, he, he tried to do the job too it went through his hands and he tried to get it together with his knees and just stuff it in there between his knees and think that maybe the officials would go for that one that it didn't touch the ground hey, he is really a valuable guy to this team you know you don't always see that guy that is is doing these types of things you see him try to put it between his legs yeah that were that Monty Coleman, you know, the covering linebacker is a guy you don't see as much, but sometimes is a bigger contributor than the blitzing linebacker. Oh! Out of bounds. After a gain of seven or eight. Cincinnati trying to stay unbeaten and successful at the moment. Colts over the Bills by three. 6-0 Kansas City over Houston. The Rams 33 to nothing in Atlanta. Seattle 13, Cleveland 7. Green Bay beating New England. They were 0-5. Minnesota 14-10 over Tampa Bay. And the Bears by 10 over Detroit. Third and four here. Back to throw. sideline and out of bounds by Todd Bowles at the 16. He can turn it on. Well, they have to get the ball to him. The Cowboys do one way or another. They tried to run and that didn't work. So the other way and the way that the Redskins were fear the most is as a pass receiver. Here he comes out as a halfback, just weaves his way through, goes back out to the corner and catches a big pass from Steve Bellore. Good pass protection for Pelor. You see, the, the Redskins are coming on the stunt. They, they block it off. They knock everything off. Give Pelor time to look and step up. Here's Walker again. It was interesting when we talked to the Redskins yesterday. The thing that they were saying, the thing that they fear most is not Walker running, but Walker receiving. There's a red skin down on the field. That's what Joe Gibbs is looking at. That's Monty Coleman. Who has just been one of the most valuable guys on this defense because they're playing that old bear thing a lot where Monty Coleman plays man-to-man -man on the tight end. There's his replacement, Mel Kaufman. So sure, Kaufman is excellent against the run, but I'm not so sure he can cover man to man. Well, not like Monty Coleman. And, and the thing is, that does so much for the defense because now that frees an Alvin Walton up to help and to play against the run and to be aggressive and not have to worry about being a pass defender. Number 51, Monty Coleman. There is the injured Redskins. Hunter, Tom Barnhart. The event you might have joined us late he pulled a thigh muscle last week in practice and aggravated it today in the warm-up and so low miller has been doing all the kicking we're going to look again at monty coleman he's on the left of the screen right there coming in and uh, you don't see what happened to him, but looks like right at the end there, the pile starts to fall on him. Kevin Dogan had gotten a good block on Coleman. And I think Alvin Walton might have hit him in the back. You know, the other thing, when you see a guy like that get up and shake hands and walk off on his own, you know he's okay. To, 
sometimes you get a twist or a turn in there, and you don't want to move it. You want to make sure it's okay before you try and get up. I think that even brought a little smile to Joe Gibbs's face when he got up. Second down and three. Cowboys at the Redskin nine with five minutes and 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Mel Kaufman. Mel Kaufman is one of those guys who doesn't play the pass as well as Monty Coleman, but plays the run well. And good training is from Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. <laughs> there must be a reason you say that. Well, Bobby Beathard, the general manager of the Redskins. And Walker hit hard at the five. You see that hit again? That's Alvin Walton, I bet. That 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 collision, maybe it isn't Walton, but I'll tell you, it's a good collision because when they hit here, watch Walker when he turns up, and the collision right there, head on head, Walker gets another step or two, then three Redskins get him going backwards. That was Clarence Vaughn who hit him first. Number 31. But that's what Herschel could do. I mean, he stands up, he gets that thing going forward, and then here comes three of those Redskins. Finally get him going backwards. That makes it first and goal at the five. Coleman over on the sideline. They're still talking to him. But he'll probably be back. Newsom in front of Walker. Herschel. By Manley this time. Maybe got a yard. Dexter Manley was saying that he doesn't do anything different to tackle Herschel. He says, I just hope I can get my hands on those backs. And he said, once you see him, you, you don't know who's who anyway. As a defensive lineman, they got their, their head down, their hands are down, guys blocking them. They just try and grab anything that comes by with the other colored jersey on. Second and goal now from the four. The first one there, he had no chance. A loss of three. Give Marcus Cook an assist. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you watch a guy like Walton. He's right here. He's a defensive back, but look how close he is up to the line of scrimmage. He's reading run all the way. When you show him you're going to run, he's going to get up in your backfield. And as I said before, he's always the extra guy. He's a defensive guy that is not accounted for. So that makes it third and goal for the seven. Walker in motion. Timeout Redskins. 50 remaining third quarter. 28-10 Washington. Now here's the confusion, Pat. Watch this. The Cowboys bring a receiver out here. Then they're going to bring Herschel to motion. And watch that big group of guys there. There's only four guys. Then there's about five confused Redskins there in that circle. They have no idea what to do, so they say, what the heck, let's just call timeout. Get our bearings back. Still, it's third down and seven. Third down and goal from the seven. Cowboys have had trouble all year long. For two years, when they get down in what they call the red zone inside the 20, they can't get it in the end zone. Picked off in the end zone by Wilbur Marshall. Marshall out of bounds at the 40. Another turnover. the guy 
against the Cowboys anyway, but not only do they have trouble once they get inside the 20, but they have trouble with this, throwing interceptions, having turnovers. Great play by Wilbur Marshall. He was back there. The Redskins are a man-to-man -man team, but when you get close to the goal line, they zone it. That time, Marshall was back in the zone, just free, reading Pelor's eyes. Saw it all the way to Paul Cole, picked it off. They've had as many turnovers, takeaways today as they had in the first five games. Rippin to Kelvin Bryant. Taken down by Noonan. Tell you what, Wilbur Marshall brought that interception back like a halfback. Anyway, he plays like a halfback. You know, Wilbur Marshall is one of those linebackers who runs about a 4 5 40 and has all that power and that impact. And I think when he first came to the Redskins, the Redskins paid a lot of money for him, and everyone maybe expected more of him than he could do initially. But with this guy, I tell you, it's just a matter of time. When you line up all the good linebackers in this league, you put the top five or ten guys, his name is on that list. I'll guarantee that. You bet. Ryan again. Picked up a yard. Stopped by Eugene Lockhart. It'll bring up a third down. But the clock continues to run. A minute 44 left to play third quarter. Indianapolis still ahead of Buffalo. Houston scored against Kansas City. Lead by one. Jose Canseco homered for the Oakland A's, and they lead Boston. 1-0 trying for a sweep. Griffin wrapped up by Mark Whelan. That looked like an organized play, but I think yep. that was a quarterback draw. Griffin is going to go back. He's looking for that lane that he saw earlier. Remember that lane that Jacoby and McKenzie made for him? There was no lane that time. Whalen didn't get much of a pass rush, and he just was able to come off and tackle Mark Griffin. Sometimes those lanes come better when they come up naturally rather than trying to be premeditated. Whalen playing in place of... Mark Brooks. Redskins only have 10 guys out there in the field. <laughs> They're confused. They better hurry. One second remaining when they got it off. Another good kick by Lomiller. Melvin Martin. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A flag on the play back at midfield. 43-yard punt that time by Lomiller. 22-yard return. Hey, you know, we took backup quarterback of the Cowboys, Kevin Sweeney, got it on that play. He got knocked down on that one. That's a dangerous thing on those punt return. Those guys coming up the sideline and blockers and guys flying, bodies flying. Well, Joe Gibbs went down, too. Field, number 54 on the kicking team. Penalty declined. First down. Joe Gibbs got the wind knocked out of him, and Joe Bugle bruised his knee on the same play. They had a tough time. There's Sweeney. Kevin Sweeney's young, though. He hasn't played enough to get beat up. He can still bounce around, but as you said, Gibbs said he was down. He got knocked down. To all, all the wind was out of him, and he said, all I want to be able to do is breathe, and I'll be okay. I told him, yeah, that, that does help. <laughs> Picking his way. Stopped by Mel Kaufman. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Redskins 28, the Cowboys 10. And we now pause for a word from your local station. It is in the business. Texas Stadium. Where Washington leads Dallas 28 to 10. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Se second and four in front of a sellout crowd.
Here's Palour. Incomplete. Knocked away by Walton. Intended for Thornton Chandler. I tell you, Alvin Walton is having a big game today for these Redskins because, as you say, when they pass, he's been back there in good coverage, and when they run, he's in their backfield. So as a coach on the other side, I'm sure Tom Landry's thinking, what do we have to do? We run, and the guy comes up. We pass, and the guy's back there. How do we get him in that position where he's a tweener? Third and four. The Lord doesn't utilize the spread formation. Chandler and motion to the lure back to throw. They have the first down to Ray Alexander. Picked up seven. Kurt Dovea made the stop. Alexander is one of those guys who's a big target for wide receiver. Being six foot four and 200 pounds, he's the guy that you can. You know, you know, bring in on those slants, bring in on those short ones like that third and four or five and let him catch your ball and fall for a first down. Use him in those types of ways. First down, Cowboys. Walton tripped him up. And Herschel got 12. You know, all the Redskins are saying about Herschel Walker that he's like a Russian roulette thing. You know, you never know when he's going to break, break the big one. So, you know, you sit there, you stop him for two, you stop him for two, you stop him for one, then boom, he goes 170 yards, and that's what kills him. The Redskins have been able to run. First and ten. enough for a first should be. Anyway, and the, the Cowboys get have good pass protection here. Watch them. They all lock into the Redskins. They not only give Pelour the time, but did you see how they also gave him that lane, that lane to throw to where he could hit Kelvin Martin out there. They're down to the Redskins 33 now. That's something you don't always think about. You know, you think of offensive linemen all the time creating lanes for running backs to run in, but they have to create lanes for quarterbacks to throw the ball through. Draw play to Newsom, and there is absolutely nothing there. Marcus Cook. Dexter Manley. On the tackle of Newsom. I think the guy that really fouled it up was Daryl Grant, the big right tackle in there. He got a little momentum going, and he gets in the backfield. Watch him. He's right here. Once you get that thing, and you're trying to run a draw or delay, and you meet up right here, that really doesn't have a chance. Watch him. See, he just starts in there. He gets that penetration. Then you get the ball and you go in the delay and there's nowhere to go. Look, a bunch of red jerseys hanging in there. It will be second and 12. Number 35. Pass is picked off by Todd Bowl. Now they say he dropped it. Intended for Alexander. Hey, Pelua didn't get everything on this. He threw this off his back feet going away. Bowles makes a great play, though. And if he comes down, it must have bounced out or hit the ground as he came down there. Watch number 23. This is quite an effort going up above, getting that thing. And then I guess it fell out of there. But just for that effort, you could give it to him. on the ground. You see it did pop out. It was still a heck of an effort though. Third and 12.
would bury today. Yeah, it looked like they caught one early, didn't go there, finally came back to it and said, remember that one we did early in the game? Let's try it again. Ruzek for the extra point. something more than that. I mean, all they did is they shifted, they kicked the regular ball, and in the process, they were offside. Offside, number 24 of the kicking team, five yard company, re-kick. That's Victor Scott. You know, he was taking Michael Downs's place. He just came off the injured list. He was just activated today. Downs went out with a pulled groin muscle. And now Victor Scott is down. Number Victor Scott. Remember in Denver last year, he broke an arm. He had just started to really play well. He was coming off an ankle injury, and now they're checking his left arm or shoulder. By the way, Monty Coleman, the word on him is that he has a sprained knee, will not return. See Victor Scott there. He was right at the bottom of the pile. Now they're picking him up, holding his left arm, but they're checking that left shoulder. That's the way you do it. You hold the arm at the elbow to hold the shoulder in place. The way they're, they're just headed right for the x-ray room. Look at his left shoulder. His left shoulder makes the hit. It's the shoulder on the knee. It's not the hit when he hit the ground. And as you say, Pat, they're taking him right into x-ray. Or maybe it could be out of place just to pull it back could into be. place, too. The way they're holding it certainly looks like a possibility that's the case. As a result of the 17 Redskins. Line drive kick to Derek Shepard. Takes it at the four. Still going out close to midfield. To the 48. Gibbs said he wanted to check him out. That's a good check. Next Sunday, doubleheader here on CBS begins at 12.30 with the NFL today. Dallas, Chicago, Detroit Giants, Philadelphia against Cleveland, Phoenix in Washington. And then San Francisco against the Rams in Anaheim. New Orleans, Seattle, that's a good contest. And Atlanta, Denver. down Washington just over 12 minutes left to play they lead by 11 points Elvin Brand wrapped up by Noonan and up one two Elvin Brand watch Bill Bates he's the safety now and he's on the kickoff coverage I'm kind of surprised with Victor Scott going down and Michael Downs going down they still keep him out there and look at the collision he has with Dean Hamill Hamill's number 78 those are two of the best special teams players in the league. They say, Hamill, you get base. Hamill weighs 290 pounds. Second and three. Bryant 
catch it behind the line by Newman and Jeffcoat. He heads up again to Kelvin Bryant. Loss of one brings up a third down and three. You know, isn't it funny, Pat, how when a team gets a lot of turnovers like the Redskins are and how they're moving the ball when they score 28 points, you don't notice the kicker as much? That's right. I mean, he has missed a field goal today. You yeah, know. he made the first one. They were offside. And then he missed the second one. But if you're proficient in other areas, that camouflage is a lot of problems kickers have. It really does. Jones on Rippon. But Rippon hangs in there and gets it away to Ricky Sanders. And Sanders goes out of bounds inside the Dallas 30. I have no idea how Mark Rippon gets rid of this ball. And part of it, again, as we talked about before, is being six foot four, 235 pounds. But it's easy to see why they traded Jay Schrader and kept this guy. I mean, a guy that can stand in there, be oblivious like that to rush, and throw and complete a pass with that kind of pressure is an NFL quarterback. Well, that's one of the key things you have to be to play quarterback in this league. Be oblivious to that rush, not to feel it. And I'll tell you, you don't grow up being oblivious. about the 24. Gary Cobb made the stop along with Jeff Coat. I've always had the idea or the thought that Joe Gibbs probably uses his personnel better than any coach in the NFL. He has what he calls packages and packages that include formations and different guys. I think like bringing a Jamie Morris in now. Jamie Morris, rookie running back, smaller guy. You wait until the fourth quarter the end of the game, bring them in where they get a little tired, and then somewhere he may give you a big play. Kelvin Bryant into the game. They are X-raying Victor Scott's right shoulder right now. Rippin back on second down. Gets it out and incomplete. Rushed by Jeff Coat. Intended for Ricky Sanders. For Ricky Sanders. Sanders. I think he Three. threw that one at Sanders so hard he didn't even have a time to get his hands up. It was like one of those pitchers when they throw that that 90 mile an hour fastball. Watch me, he turns around and here it comes. He couldn't even get his hands up. Went right through his hands. Of course, having Bill Bates throw an elbow at the back of your head will make your uh, hands your wide out a little. You'll get your hands down, won't you? Yeah. This will widen them out, expand uh, the gap a little. 10 3 remains. Cowboys on a blitz. Rippin gets it outside to a wide open Kelvin Bryant, and he's going to score. His third touchdown today. I think at some point they're going to find out, hey, against this Rippin, you, just because he's a new guy, a new quarterback, that doesn't mean he can't handle a blitz. I'll tell you, the reason Kelvin... Bryant is wide open like this is because everyone else is blitzing. So all Rippon has to be able to do is to get the ball off. If you get it off, you're going to have a completion and a touchdown. Low Miller to try the extra point. Three for Kelvin today. By far his best day as a Redskin. Extra point good. So with 9.55 remaining. Redskins more comfortable. 35-17. Darrell Flack, this will be from the one. He lost it in the sun. And it bounced up to him. Taken out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Ben, let's watch that touchdown. You see what happens here. You get the big rush trying to get Rippin off balance. The ball is going to go to Kelvin Bryant here. But watch what happens when they get the big rush. Now, why we stop right here? He's the hot receiver. They only got one guy to cover both of these. If he can get it there, he's going to have a touchdown. He does get it there, and he does get a touchdown. And Danny White. is the Dallas quarterback. Hands off to walk. 
Walker, who's just wrapped up immediately by Marcus Cook. Is, is still a, a favorite here of, of these Cowboy fans. Steve Pallor, uh, you know, had a had a pretty good day. I think the thing that got Pallor was that that interception down there that Wilbur Marshall picked off when he zoned in the end zone, and maybe you get a little frustrated after that. And if there's no injury involved here, it's just a quarterback decision. But Pallor looks upset with it. Second and 13 from the 19. Screen pass to Newsom. Newsom dropped the ball, flag on the play. Cowboys made the recovery. But there's a penalty marker down. One thing you have to say, these Redskins are making things happen today that they hadn't been in their first uh, first part of the season, their first four or five games. Redskin player down on the field looks like Wilbur Marshall. No. Mel Kaufman. You know, a lot of that comes in, you know, getting those turnovers comes in, in, the, in the tackling, going after the ball, a little of its luck, whatever. They haven't had it, and uh, they're finding it today, and this may be the thing that is going to get them back and get on a roll. The Redskins have been slow starting teams many years under Joe Gibbs. Right. And uh, they have to put a string of wins together. Pass interference, number 84 on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. That's against Doug Cosby. He's had a tough time. Well, he has. He has a, a bad Achilles tendon and uh, has a hard time practicing. And he, and he said that, you know, he can play. He can do a lot of things. But the one thing he can't do is push off. And, you know, pushing off is the thing what you have to do when you make a cut, and that separates you from the defender. It's also what you have to do when you push off when you block. At one time, he was as good as anyone in the league. You know, it's hard to think. I always thought of Duck Cosby as a as a young guy, and, and he's a 10-year veteran. And you always think, where did the years go? Remember when he backed up Billy Joe Dupree? remember when he was playing at the University of Santa Clara. Like my my sons used to go to a camp down there and, and their counselor was Doug Cosby. Is that right? Yeah. The other guy is now he's a 10-year veteran. Third and five. The ball at the Dallas 27. Here comes the injured Redskin, Mel Coughlin. You know, like Joe Gibbs said, a lot of their injuries have hit in the same position. Yeah. And here it's happening again. Monty Coleman gets hurt. Mel Kaufman comes in for him. They play the same position, and now Kaufman gets hurt. So now they've become playing with their third left linebacker of this game. Danny White on third and five will operate from the Dallas spread formation. comes loose it's Ray Alexander not nearly enough for a first down Clarence Vaughn made the hit that's why you know you know there's number 78 that's Dean Hamill we watch him all the time on on special teams now we'll watch him on a pass rush against Nate Newton there's two balls just getting in there and driving at each other. They look like they don't even need a quarterback to play this game. Derek Shepard deep. Mike Saxon to punt. And they shift again. This time it didn't work. Saxon's kick to Shepard at his own 27. Could have been gone. If he didn't run into his own teammate, he could.
could have been off to the races. 44-yard punt, return of 18. Shepard, I think, might have won a job. 5-17 with just over seven and a half minutes left to play. Redskins had the ball their own 45. Annie White inserted into the contest the last time Dallas had the ball. They couldn't move it. Offense even, but the turnovers have made the difference. Griffin. Brand. Ed Jones was the first to hit him. Ron Burton with an assist. I think Calvin Bryant is trying now in the fourth quarter Jones just to prove that he's a he's a workhorse. Durable. Yeah. yeah words that. like that. Not racehorse. Not thoroughbred. Workhorse. Durable. That's that's a durable day's work. I'll say. One of the proudest things, I, I remember in the preseason we were talking to Doug Williams, and he says one of the biggest things is Calvin Bryant got through training camp and didn't miss a day. And they give them all special T-shirts if they never miss a day in training camp. Second and ten. We'll try it again. Kevin Brooks. Bryant got four. It'll bring up third and six. And yeah, they're probably, probably trying to balance out their run between left and right. We remember early they were having so much success running over there between behind Raleigh McKenzie and Joe Jacoby. That's Jeff Bostic. He's the center. And, and now maybe they're trying to balance it out and get some work over there to right side between Mark May and behind Mark May and Jim Lachey. Third and between. six. Clock running well and just over six minutes remaining. Picked off by Manny Hendricks. And perhaps should have been. Art Monk was the intended receiver. Manny Hendricks had good coverage on Art Monk. He had him there all the way. It looked like Mark Rippon thought something was going to happen that didn't. Because here comes Monk in. And Hendricks was underneath him between he and Rippon. And uh, Rippon threw it anyway. Chip Low Miller has averaged 34.8 today. Kelvin Martin back deep for the Cowboys. Now less than six minutes remain. Out of bounds inside the 20. Seattle, by the way, has beaten Cleveland. That's the final. And all Seattle's points came off turnovers. Coming up next, the NFL Today postgame show. Brent Busberger had an interview with Dodger manager Tom Lasorda about the Jay Howell situation and the playoffs. Danny White is getting some work. He passed this time to Walker. Out of bounds at about the 18. Crawford Kerr with a good block in front. That's the final we were just talking about. That was a funny block by Crawford Kerr. It was a screen pass. As you say, Kerr came out there and the linebacker was out there covering and he fell down. And Kerr just blocked him anyway. Bay will get their first win. Two nothing now. Second and four. Underneath the walk. That's enough for a first. Raven Caldwell on the stop with Kurt Govea. They need more quicker than that. Yeah, sometimes you can you can wait and wait to to get the ball to Herschel and and 
you find out you're down 35 to 17, and lo and behold, it's it's too late. Too late. First down, Dallas at their own 30. To Steve Folsom. And a gain of nine. Wilbur Marshall on the tackle. You know, the way these quarterbacks are going down, I've always thought you need at least three in your roster, and you better hope you have a couple of good ones, and, and maybe it's not always a controversy, but it's probably going to be a discussion here in Dallas now. Uh, well, you know, sure. Should Danny White start or stay with Pelor? And then the interesting one, how about in Washington when Doug Williams is ready to come back? You know, when does he come back? You, know, you put him in if they say the Redskins win two or three in a row. Well, you can't do much better than Rippon has done. They're going deep to Walker, covered by Walton, and knocked down by Walton. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys is prohibited. Four minutes, 17 seconds remain. It looks like the Redskins will even their record at three and three. And the Cowboys will go to two and four, face a murder schedule. In fact, these two teams face the most difficult schedule. Walker got the first down. Tripped up by Raven Caldwell. Raven Caldwell is, we said earlier, he's the third left linebacker that the Redskins have gone through. Monty Coleman started, of course, and he's the guy who's a great cover guy and has been a big part of this defense. He went out. And then Mel Kaufman came in. He's been injured. Now Raven Caldwell is the third guy playing there. Danny White. The snap from Rafferty. Picked off by Todd Bowles. Into a pack. But no one there except Redskins. Bowles has to feel good about that one. He, you, you know, he had the first one he dropped, then he had the second one he could have had, remember, and he dropped that one. And finally, that's the third time he's had his hands on the ball, but his first interception today. Hey, that's, that's a big thing. That's what the Redskins haven't had. That's the fifth turnover they've gotten. They didn't have that coming in. And, of course, for the Cowboys, you can't give a team like the Redskins five turnovers or the whole joint's going to start to go home. And they are. First down, Sam Washington. Excellent job again by Mark Griffin. First and ten Redskins, the ball at their own 46. Or the Dallas 46. Jamie Morris. Ron Francis wrestled into the ground. The final. The Rams shut out Atlanta 33 to nothing. Greg Bell had 155 yards in 21 carries. The Rams gained 504 yards today. All right, that is that is something. You know, with that with that offense, uh, we did the game. Remember against the the Giants, and they had a big day offensively. And. You, you never think of the Rams being that type of team. They've always been kind of yeah. a conservative offense. And then a couple times, boom, they explode. Remember Jim Everett throws five touchdown passes? Right. Who would have thought? We'll have them next week. Jamie Morris. And run down by Jeff Coates. We'll have them next week against the 49ers. That'll be a test. Hey, the 49ers always one of the, the best teams in this in this league and always a team that's going to be around there when uh, when this thing ends up. I think the Rams are too and you can't count these Redskins out. I, nope. I I just think they're too good of an organization. They're too well coached that even though they have problems for somehow they just have the talent and the ability to come through those problems. And the NFC East really has replaced the Central as the black and blue division because they just knock each other off. 35-17. Third down, Red.
Ovechkin. Jamie Morris. Might be a little bit short. Stopped by Eugene Lockhart. It's Kelvin Bryant. I tell you, he looks pretty good, though, too, doesn't he? He looks fresh. There's no uh, bruises there, no blood coming out. He's still pumping right hands. Yeah. Because, look, I mean, he's, he's taken over over 82 hits today and then he goes on the sideline and he has to take some more congratulatory hits there are some guys a group of guys that had a good time on the way down and will have a good time on the way back oh the hog edge yeah they go wherever these redskins go they always sit in the worst seats too the oh, oh, God. had an open field Nobody in front of him and just got tripped up. Flag on the play. Jamie Morris on the carry. Look at that. Green Bay finally exploded. They've been losing so long that they are going to break out of that thing and they're breaking out in a big way. Number 40 on the defense. Five yards finally from the end of the run. Play results in the first round. Redskin first down now. A minute and six seconds left to play. They can put this into the win column. There was a big contributor too, Wilbur Marshall. Dexter Manley was toast last night. He can't believe how much Wilbur Marshall talks in the play. He said he goes out there and just talks to that offense the whole game. He's a member of that 3P club where you push, point, and punch after the play. And off the field, he's very quiet and a loner pretty much. Cowboys will drop to two and four, and a tough road in front of them. You know, they had their problems defined, and one of them was injuries, which they couldn't do anything about the Redskins. The other one was the kicking game, which when you win like you did today, you don't have to do anything. But the third one was the, the big one that they took care of, and that was getting turnovers, and when you get them, doing something with them. had a big day. Disappointing day for the man in the hat. As the Redskins win it 35-17. Joe Gibbs quickly to the tunnel. He's 88 and out the gate. So once again, the final score is 35-17. Stay tuned for the postgame show coming up next. John Madden, Pat. All right, Brent, no question but that Kelvin Bryant was the Redskins' star of this game, along with their defense, which forced all those turnovers. We talked to Kelvin right after the game, and here's what he had to say about his performance. Well, you ought to be. Uh, I'm satisfied after this game, but uh, and last week's game, but you never know. Uh, I just wanted to run the ball, and uh, I'm just glad they gave me an opportunity uh, to run it. Well, you ran it today 23 times, 118 yards, and a touchdown. How do you feel after that? Uh, I feel pretty good. I'm, I'm still uh, injury-free, and uh, right now I'm just trying to stay uh, healthy. And just when I'm out there, just give 100%. They well, of course, with me is John Madden. Let's take a look now at the standings in the NFC East and see how even things are. The Redskins move to 3-3. Three and three. The Cowboys drop to 2-4. and four. The Giants, Phoenix, are 3-2. and two. And, of course, the Giants play Philadelphia tomorrow night. Dallas down at the bottom now, 2-4. and four. And the way they knock each other off, John, I can't see that, um, that any more than one team would make it to the playoffs. Can you? I would think not. I mean, this Eastern Division, as you said earlier, is like the black and blue division. And, and the Redskins were impressive today. I think the Cowboys are on the right track. I think it's going to be a while before they get there. But the Redskins still have to be concerned about those injuries. I mean, they come in. Charles Mann, they didn't have today. Their punter goes down in the pregame warm-up. Donnie Warren's not there. They lose their linebackers, and, 
Uh, these problems just seem to be mounting on him. What do you think is going to happen in Washington when Doug Williams comes back? I think eventually Doug Williams will be the starter again, but I think now they have to feel that Mark Rippon gets better every week that he plays, and they don't have to rush Doug back. Right now, let's take you to Minnesota, and here's James Brown.